We spend most of our lives trying to feel more meaning and happiness. We strive to discover and live what many psychologists and philosophers call the good life. Could it be possible, though, through science and understanding, we can figure out what the good life consists of and teach that to everyone? That, in a nutshell, is what positive psychology hopes to do. Positive psychology is a sub-branch of study within psychology and is defined as the scientific study of what makes life most worth living. In this video, I'll go over what positive psychology is and where it came from, some of its findings and teachings, and some of the controversy surrounding it and my thoughts about this subject. Positive psychology began as a formal discipline in psychology in 1998 when its founder, Martin Seligman, chose it as a theme for his term as president of the American Psychological Association. Seligman echoed the work of humanistic psychologist Abraham Maslow when he stated that psychology had focused too much on what's wrong with people and not enough on what's right. Psychology had moved too far away from its original roots, which were to make the lives of all people more fulfilling and productive, he said, and too much toward the important but not all important area of curing mental illness. See, as a response to Freud and psychology in general, Maslow and other humanistic psychologists wrote about how curing mental illness and neuroses isn't enough to give patients a good quality of life. One may have their depression and neuroses cured, but live life like a statue, feeling no positive feelings. So positive psychologists believe we should study and discover what it is that gives humans positive emotions, like happiness, meaning, and fulfillment, to have a better quality of life. Despite being a recent branch of study, positive psychology has exploded in popularity and received hundreds of thousands of dollars in grant money in just a short amount of time. So I'll go over some of the findings from the research in positive psychology so you can see what it hopes to accomplish, and then I'll cover some of the theory that's being taught by some of the core influencers. Research of positive psychology has covered many areas, including happiness set point levels, or the theory that once happiness on average is genetically determined or partially genetically determined, personality, marriage, parenting, intelligence, age, and more. One major theme discovered is that shifting one's perspective can help increase and even maximize the potential for happiness in many of our everyday lives. For example, a 2005 study showed that practicing gratitude is a big contributor to happiness in life. Another study found that spending time with people who are naturally happy increases your overall levels of happiness. Studies have also found what doesn't influence happiness too. For instance, a 2009 study showed that people overestimate the impact of money on their happiness. Money does have some influence, but attaining high levels of wealth will not drastically impact one's happiness levels. Research has indicated that happiness and well-being are not just present-oriented, but then have a past and future element too. For instance, research by Roy Baumeister found that what we call happiness is present-oriented, rooted in the moment, while what we refer to as meaningfulness is more focused on the past and future and how they link to the present. This differentiation has led to some interesting findings. For instance, givers experience more meaning while takers experience more happiness in life. Now, these are just a small sample of what research in positive psychology has found. As you can see, a lot of these findings suggest that there's some behavior or action that we can take that will, in most cases, improve our quality of life. That leads to the question, is there any core theory that has evolved within positive psychology? Well, there's no one accepted theory at the moment on what well-being and living the good life specifically is and how to come about it. Still, the theory of Seligman and co-founder of positive psychology, Maheli Csikszentmihalyi, are heavily quoted and used. In his book, Authentic Happiness, Seligman has theorized that what constitutes being happy and living the good life can be grouped into three different theories of life. These are number one, the pleasant life, or the life of enjoyment, which examines how people experience and savor positive feelings and emotions primarily in the present. The good life, or the life of engagement, which examines the beneficial effects of immersion, absorption, and flow, a concept written in length by Csikszentmihalyi, which is an experience of a loss of time when there is a positive match between a person's strength and their current task. Number three, the meaningful life, or life of affiliation, which examines how individuals derive a positive sense of well-being and purpose from life. This includes examining how people derive well-being from aspects larger than themselves, like movement, social groups, and belief systems. Seligman further investigated the meaningful life and what precisely well-being is in his 2011 book, Flourish, where he devised what's called the PERMA model. PERMA is an acronym now recognized within positive psychology to help define and explain human well-being in greater depth. It includes five core features, including positive emotions, part of having high well-being, 
involves experiencing positive emotions and enjoying yourself in the present. Engagement. If you're not fully engaged in something, it's hard to have a sense of well-being. When we're engaged in something we like to do, we lose sense of time and become absorbed in that activity. This has to do with flow. Relationships. Humans appear hardwired for relationships, and without deep relationships, our well-being can suffer. Meaning. Just experiencing positive emotions in the present isn't enough to significantly improve well-being alone. Humans also need a sense of meaning and purpose greater than ourselves. Accomplishment or achievement. When we have goals and accomplish them, we have higher states of well-being. To enhance well-being, then, uh, he furthers, one needs to investigate ways to incorporate these five key points into one's life. Now, there's far more to the theory and research behind positive psychology, which I can get into if you want, but let's take a look at some of the main criticisms of the movement as well. There are many, but three main ones seem to stick out to me the most, at least. And number one, positive psychology isn't a real science. Now, this is a criticism of psychology in general. Positive psychology relies too much on subjective reports from individuals, as no one can truly empirically measure another person's states of conscious experience. Those uh, that research positive psychology acknowledge this and seem dedicated to continue looking for more objective ways and more scientific ways to investigate well-being. Number two, increased commercialization. Positive psychology is rapidly growing in popularity, which has ushered in many people attempting to capitalize off of its success. This has led to criticism that this branch of psychology is turning into something equivalent to an MLM-esque selling system in which speakers, coaches, and authors water down research uh, used in positive psychology and use its brand to sell false promises of blissful happiness in exchange for monetary gain. Increased numbers of coaching systems, courses for sale, and bestseller books are rapidly popping up. In fact, right on the website, positivepsychology.com, note I don't think this uh, site is affiliated with Seligman or Positive Psychology Center, you can see courses that promise happiness if taken in exchange for, in some cases, thousands of dollars. For a branch of rigorous scientific study, this is obviously not normal. Significant ties to religious organizations. The Templeton Foundation, originally established to promote evangelical Christianity and is still pursuing goals related to religious understanding, has recently helped establish the Positive Psychology Center at University of Pennsylvania, where Seligman taught. It appears to be Positive Psychology's biggest private sponsor, which raises concerns in the scientific community. One institute affiliated with religion attempt to influence studies and findings that skew the results and well-being toward adopting religious Christian principles. Philosophers, including Mike Martin of Chapman University, say that positive psychology has already left science and has entered the realm of ethics. He points to some of Seligman's latest work in which he claims now one needs to adopt certain moral virtues and ethical theories similar to what could be found in the Christian tradition in order to have well-being in life. Now, however, despite the criticism, I think positive psychology and more so evidence-based studies into human well-being can do some good this century. I think there's evidence that what constitutes the good life for most people can be learned about, taught, and used to increase people's well-being, at least to some degree. We'll know more for sure how much happiness and well-being can be improved once more research comes out, which in itself is a very good thing. The increasing commercialization inside of positive psychology is concerning, though, and hopefully some of the main founders and influencers within the movement will take action in order to separate some of the research and findings from the coaching, consulting, and happiness gurus before positive psychology in general is just branded as fake pseudoscience. Then we'll have to wait another several decades before serious research into humanistic studies and human well-being are taken seriously again. So overall, if you want to hear more about positive psychology, uh, just let me know below or anything else you want to hear videos about. And also uh, make sure to like this video if it was beneficial in any way and subscribe for more videos like it using the link in the description and turn on the notification bell to receive updates when the new videos come out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again.